everybody, it's Sam at Mixup Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really pretty 6x6 bridge fold card. So I've done the 5x7 and I will share that one up here, but I thought I would do the 6x6 really to show off these beautiful little poppy flowers. And this is with the latest Simply Cards and Papercraft magazine, and I'll show you that one in a moment. And it's the Old New Layered Stamps, and they're gorgeous. Now, the reason I've rushed this video is because I've already had some people message to say that they have got this magazine and that they struggle with layering the stamps sometimes. So hopefully this video will also give you a few tips and help you to maybe use these stamps better. There's many ways to use them and I try and talk through that through the video. But the whole thing folds flat like this and it will fit into a six by six envelope. And then on the back, you've got plenty of room there to write your message. You can decorate these panels on the back as well if you want to. I've had a little acetate butterfly which matches nicely and the sentiment is from the same stamp set as well. So yeah, let me show you how to make it. Okay, so this is my creative mess here because I've already been stamping and colouring and I've got all of these ones ready here. I'm going to go through the sizes of the card in a moment. I just want to focus on the stamp and getting one more of the poppies done first. So this is how it comes. This is the layered poppy. Like I said, you do get the stencil and depending on where you shop, you sometimes get an extra freebie as well. I know some of the supermarkets do yeah, throw in some extras. So I've already pulled all my stamps off. I just wanted you to see it here, but the, the sentiments are beautiful. I mean, I love that you have the happy and the sorry separate, and then you have all these little subtitles to fit in with it. So it's gonna work for so many different, um, you know, occasions and things. So like I said, I've already pulled all the stamps out. Now with layering stamps, there are, to be honest, there's quite a few ways that you can use them. Now, generally people find them quite, I guess, hard at times to line up but there are little kind of things that you can do to help so there are I kind of like look at the stamp and look at like something that really stands out like there might be like a slight jagged edge or a slightly longer section and I keep that as my focal point and that's the kind of point that I look at every time I go to layer them down so I'm going to show you because I don't want to keep this video too long I like to keep them you know as short as I can get them ready so I'm going to show you the way that they are meant to be used but then I'm going to show you the way that I've done it to make these okay so there's two ways that you can choose okay so I've just got some cardstock here I'm only going to stamp one well actually no I'll do two like I said the one that I, the one the way I've done it and the way that they ask you to do or they tell you to do them so you have all of these pieces and if I grab this stamp here on the back it does tell you that first of all you stamp your most blocked image okay so the one with the most solid stamp so where is it? Oh, I think it's still attached here, this one here. It's that big black one. And then you have one with slight detail and then you add all these bits as well. And then you have the finer detail, so just the outline. Um, so I always say that the larger the stamp in terms of its surface is the first ones and then you just kind of work your way down. And your last stamp that you stamp down will have sometimes hardly anything on it. it might just have a little line or a couple of little dots. It's just that final detail. So. First of all, they want you to stamp this one here. So I'm going to position mine down the bottom because I want to get my one that I'm going to do in a minute up here somewhere. Now, what you need to do is look through your dies that you have and you want kind of like a blend. So you, for example, for a poppy, you want a dark red, a medium red, and then a lighter red. You may want to do some oranges. You may want to do something completely different. Now, I am going to do maybe slightly different colors just because I really want you to be able to see it in the video. So this first one here, I'm going to stamp in the lighter color. So for this one here, I'm just using this stamping up powder pink. And this is just because I want to make sure you guys can see it. Okay, so this is a light colour and I'm just stamping that background there. Then you want to grab the next one, which you'll see here is this kind of funny detail there in the middle. I mean, they don't look like much when you're stamping, you know, when you see them, but they do obviously come to life. So it's this one here. You see, it's just all a bit random. If you look here, you'll see there's a tiny little piece here darker red that's right on that bottom piece there. Now that's the piece that I'm going to use as my kind of pointer. As long as I get that lined up, in fact maybe all of that kind of red that sits along the bottom of that, you know, the actual poppy, that's what I'm going to use as my kind of reference point. So I'm going to focus on that and then everything else will just kind of fall into place. So here's the stamp and you can see that kind of bit here. That's that bobbly bit. And that needs to sit in this kind of bit here. Now the good thing about these is they're clear, so I can just, I'm going to bring my head over, 
okay and you can just spend some time moving that around I'm just going to pick that one up and then I'm going to bring in this darker pink okay so this is rose red again just so you can see it for the video and then just stamp that down okay so next it's now I'm not going to worry about the stems and then I'm going to do this black outline here so which is this one all right so it's the biggest stamp now this one here because it's the outline now mine is going to just come off a little bit so I'm going to have to move it up. I'm going to concentrate on getting that kind of in place and then everything else will kind of, you know, line itself up. Now one thing I would say about um, these kind of stamps, layered stamps, is they they are to create a different kind of style. So a lot of people will do like a water brush, maybe just do like a blob of orange in um, watercolour and then stamp over the top. And it doesn't matter that it's all come out of, you know, it's not within the lines. That's the style. So don't, I don't know, don't feel kind of disheartened if you don't get it lined up. But saying that, the way that I do it after is I is a way I prefer. That's how I kind of use layered stamps. If you've seen me in my other tutorials, whenever I've used layered stamps, I never actually use them for the way that they're intended. So again, you may prefer. It is a bit easier, I think. Maybe it's a cheap way. So I've got that, I think, pretty much where... It should go so we'll sit this one down because you can also do these back to front you, and that's how I do it in the next one is you lay this the detailed one down first because you might find that that actually you can see it better so I'm just gonna then put this one this is in black so there you go so you can see I have got I'm not kind of lined up there but also you can go in with your pens which is what I'm going to do on that next one but that is how the flowers kind of is meant to come together in terms of its layers so I know that doesn't go but it is purely so you guys can see it and understand the stamps I'm going to do it properly with the next um, tutorial but again if I just bring in so this is the green stem now that's to go over because I've already stamped in black it's quite strong the black obviously is black but now if I stamp that over just bring in this green and this is when things start to kind of come together all right, so you can see now how this all works. So your solid, most solid stamps, that's the solid one there. That's the solid one that I just stamped. They're your first ones that go down. And then this is another stem one here. And if I just bring this in, you can see. So you see there's the, the solid, and then there's the detail of that same piece. So don't, because it's all there, don't feel you have to use it, but it does work quite well. I mean, to be honest, that isn't actually that bad. If you were to have lots of them maybe coming out of a vase, it would look really effective. So have a play around, but don't feel disheartened if it doesn't quite line up, because if you bring in any kind of colour, so let's bring this pen in here, you can just go, I know this pen doesn't go, but again, it's just another example, and just kind of fill in any bits you don't like. I mean, if you've got all your stamping up colours and all the stamping blends and stuff, then everything matches. You can just go in with the corresponding marker with the, the with the ink and, um, you know, blend it all together. But so that is how they, the, I guess, the order that they should go. But now I'm going to show you how I do it and how I prefer to do it. So I'm going to pop this back down here. So I'm going to bring in the fine outline first so this one here okay you can just see it probably better if I put it on the white since that's how it looks all right and that's the one I'm going to stamp first and that's all I stamp for this one then I stamp these so I don't even use the background one so I'm going to pop that one down there now because I'm using markers alcohol markers I'm using my memento just so I don't get any of that ink running and any bleed so just stamp that down Okay, so that's that one there. And then I'm going to bring in the thinner. So this is the frame of this one here. Okay, so that's what that one is there. And again, I'm just going to kind of roughly, it doesn't really matter too much where that one goes. We do it there. So I'm going to cut this out. And they're really easy to cut out as well. I didn't struggle with them. There's not too much detail. So again, just come in with that one. Okay, and then, and if you want a real contemporary clean look, you can just keep it like this. 
it's you know have a real like, monochrome just have a nice sentiment there's, there's so many ways to use them you, they don't have to be used in the three stages that they show you and now I just want to bring in that detail of the leaf which is this one here okay and that one again you can have it really up, up high I'm gonna have it a little bit different with this one I might bring it out quite high actually just because the others are I want them to all look a little bit different. So just make sure the end there touches roughly that stem. But again, I'll take that off. You can touch this up with pens and markers and watercolour and yeah, there's lots of ways to I guess save it if you're not happy with it. Especially being able to colouring and join up any kind of lines and stuff. So again, I'm just gonna ink that one up. Okay, so I'm not touching that. I'm gonna color all that in myself, but I am gonna use the solids for the leaves and this kind of bud. So it's these two here, which is this one here and this one here. So again, I'm just gonna, and this is what I mean about stamping. Sometimes it's good to stamp the detail first because I can really see that black line underneath. You can see it through the stamp. So it's a much easier way to see where you are. So although the rule is that you're meant to stick, um, stamp this one down last, the most detailed one, I actually think it can help you more if you stamp it down first. So do you play, don't be scared by them because they're, they're brilliant. I love the concept of these kind of stamps, but it's just kind of finding the, the way, the best way to use them for yourself really. So those two are in place. And then I'm going to do these in this green along with the stems as well. So I'm just going to stamp those. And then this one I'm doing the same green. So I know the bud's there, but I'm going to blend it with some darker green um, alcohol markers in a minute. So can you see how nicely it comes? To, it really does start to bring it all to life. And then the last one is just that plain stem that goes right through the middle so you just want to focus on the top and then it's kind of roughly running over the black as well as along the sides again don't worry it's like I always say it's what crafting's about make things up do things your own way don't well because someone's wrote it down or that's what it says in the instructions I was always a rule breaker you can probably tell anyway so right I have cleaned oh that one's just flicked right off but luckily missed my clothes right so that's everything stamped so I'm going to take that away okay so you can see the ones I've done here and they are slightly different tones I do like if I'm doing like a birthday card I do prefer to do maybe like more orange kind of poppies I love the orange poppies there's a neighbor actually who has a beautiful kind of just yeah loads of them all over her garden um the red ones to me are the remembrance kind of colour which is beautiful but I do like to do the orange ones so I have a mix of markers alcohol markers here these are the cheapy touch light ones but I've also got my Arteza ones it's not until you use different kind of yeah qualities that you notice a real difference because these are quite yeah they just feel quite cheap but the colour is lovely still so I'm using this orange here and I'm just going to colour the whole thing in this block orange colour You'll see there where the, the black kind of doesn't completely kind of join because it's not a complete framed stamped image. Just kind of go where you think or look at the inspiration, look at the magazine. There's that one. Then I'm going to come in with a real darker orange. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use this one here, tomato red actually. And I'm going to come in right all around here. Don't worry that there's a real difference in the colours there because it will blend beautifully. Okay, so that's that one. So I'm now gonna get that quickly fussy cut out and then we can just put the card together because that's the easy part. Okay, so for the actual card, you want a piece of cardstock that is eight by six. Cause like I said at the very beginning, this is a slightly different size to the one I've done before. 
along the so sorry yeah eight by six along the eight inch side you want to score at one inch two inches six inches and seven inches and if you flip it over and score again at the two and six marker okay or you don't have to score at two and six this way and just score it that way on the back because you're going to fold them differently then you'll want a piece of acetate completely optional you don't need it at all but i just thought it does give it quite a nice look and this is five and three quarters by six i've already gone and put red tape along the six inch side okay just make sure you stick it on the right one because that is going to it's basically the height of the card and then once we go to stick it it will all make sense and then you want whatever you your kind of bridge piece is you want that to be six inches by whatever height you want now this is going to be grass so I've done this so it's two inches high but I'm going to cut into that in a moment now for your mats and layers you're going to need two pieces that are three quarters of an inch by five and three quarters or you may want to do seven eighths of an inch by five and seven eighths of an inch and then drop down by one in by one eighth of an inch so then do a layer on top of that which could then be three quarters of an inch by five and three quarters i'm creating the grass and sky scene with my blending brushes and inks and i'm just going to have mine so that they are seven eighths of an inch by five and seven eighths so it's pretty much covering these two outer panels and, and then the inside piece, mine's going to be three and seven eighths of an inch by five and seven eighths of an inch. Okay, but again, you might want to drop yours down differently, depending. So before I stick that down, that's the bit I'm going to do next. So if you don't want to watch me blend, just fast forward. But I know quite a lot of you did ask me how I done it when I made my shutter card. because so I created that really nice green going into the sky background. Okay, so to create that background, I've used the Tim Holtz Distress Oxides in the Mermaid Lagoon and the Mode Lawn. And then I've used my favourite makeup brushes for blending. So these are clean, but they're just stained now. So this is just some scrap. You just want to make sure that it's enough to cover those sizes that I gave you earlier. And then, so I'm going to start with the green first and work my way kind of, I kind of work up and then work down and then kind of let the middle do its thing with a little bit of help. Anyway, so <laughs> you just want to grab your makeup brush. I'll link these all below. I know so many of you have brought these already. They are brilliant. I'm just making sure I've got a nice amount on there. And then just as you would with your normal blending brushes, sponges, you just kind of come up and in circular motions, cover your cardstock. Now you want a smooth cardstock. This is smooth-ish, but it works fine. And then whenever I'm doing like a grass, I come up slightly more on each side, okay? And then what I, I mean, you're not really gonna see the bottom of this because this grass piece is going over there. So with that in mind, I'm gonna bring mine up a little bit more. But this is the good thing about these brushes is before with the blending sponges, if you came into the center like this, more than likely you would get a circle mark and it's really hard to lift it. Whereas look at this, you just, all the work, these brushes just do it all for you. It's brilliant. So that's my bottom there. It looks quite limey, yellowy, which looks still looks really good. I like it. It's almost like the sun's coming, kind of coming down on it. So that's that one. I might come back in with that one in a minute. So I'll just leave that one there. And then I've got my blue Mermaid Lagoon again ink that up and what I would also say is whenever you're doing a surface like this like a large area don't touch it with your fingers because the distress oxides do take a little bit longer to dry is get some scrap card and pop it over the top and then you're doing exactly the same thing coming in from the top if you want to bring in slightly darker blues at the top here as well to just create more kind of depth you can but I'm keeping this really kind of just the two colors really fresh and then bring it in. But I want it to be lighter in this center area because that's gonna be what's right behind the poppies. Yeah, I'm happy with that. It's looking a little bit blotchy when I look through the camera, but actually in person, it looks great. So I'm happy with that and hopefully it will pick up better in the photos. Okay, so I've trimmed my pieces down to the sizes that I said earlier and now they will go this one in the middle 
and these on the outside. I'm going to probably cut two more here actually just thinking about it because I think yeah it's going to look nice and now I'm going to cut the grass and then these will all look I think it's going to look really quite sweet so I'm going to cut those ones in a second quickly show you the grass and then again so many of you will just skip all of this because yeah it gets a bit repetitive but as I always say there's always someone new watching these are just the vegetable scissors usually found in the kitchen sections and I'm just going to cut down I am going to put a sentiment over this like so I think mine are blunt I've got another pair that I should have used I've got a blue pair and a green pair I've picked up the green to be fair though it does kind of add a little bit to it so it's not that bad and then the last one like so okay but then also what I'm going to do is grab these scissors here and just start to shape them a little bit so that's kind of done the work there for you but if you then kind of go in and just come over each side just slightly differently you see you'll get like more of a grass is it a, what's it is it a shard no what's it, what's it called blade that's the word shard shard of glass anyway but yeah so I'm just going to go along and just kind of shape that a little bit more Okay, so first of all, you want to stick down, if you've done these sides now as well, you want to stick down the middle and those two. Okay. Mine are a little bit short, so I'm going to bring mine up higher. What size did I, what measurement did I just give you there? Yeah, I've done mine more five and three quarters, when it should have been five and seven eighths, which is what I told you to do. So just make sure you do the five and seven eighths, because otherwise it'll be too short but you're not going to see it because the grass is covering it all anyway. So I'm going to stick those three first, then we're going to stick our acetate and then stick those to the grass and everything else. Okay, so there's those stuck down and then you just want to fold the two middle score lines in and then that outer one out and again that one in and that one out. So there you'll have your bridge fold. I quite like that they're inside there as well. Then with this piece here, so I've stuck the tape along the two longer sides and it's going to be slightly shorter because it was five and three quarters. So the idea is, is take off the backing on one side first. Now if you want to stamp or put anything on the back here, do that obviously before this goes down. But you want to stick it just slightly in from the edge. Okay, so it's exactly six inches tall. So make sure you line up your top and your bottom. Make sure that's all nicely stuck down. So you can see there I haven't gone right to the edge. And then take the backing off of the other side and bring this one so it's folded. That side is folded onto this and then we're going to stick that down because that will now become our 6x6 six six size and that's how it's going to fit in the envelope. Start from this side and kind of roll it and then as you get here make sure your top and your bottom's all lined up and then stick it down. Okay, and it should stay within that section, which it has. If it does come off at all, then you can just trim it. But now we've got that window. And this is a great style, again, for any underwater themes you want to do. I've done many of those, but um, anything that acetate, I think, is really good. Now, these pieces are going to go and stick over that. Again, because I'm slightly short, make sure yours is longer. You may want to do it the full six inches, actually, for those front pieces. But because this grass is going to cover everything, I'm not worried because that's going to hide all of that. Okay, so again, depending on how, well, whatever you have, your bridge is going to, well, that's the thing, you don't need, the bridge is the acetate. That is what we're going to stick things onto. So the grass for me is obviously good because it's covering up the fact that they don't come down long enough, but I would say do them six inches if you're not doing grass over the top. Obviously, if you're doing it like me, then it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to add some double sided red tape again always like to use the red tape whenever I'm working with acetate okay so that's that stuck down and now when you fold it flat yeah that's how it will fit and you can put it anyway but that will now be six by six so I'm going to pop it into its upright position and now start lying down all of these beautiful poppies 
So I'm going to have I'm going to cut some of the stems because I want some of it shorter, and then I'm going to lay the grass down over the top each time. So okay, it's going to be like that, and then I've got these little buds. I might cut another one, maybe have that up a bit higher. But that's how it's going to be, and then my sentiment's going to be along the bottom. So I'm going to carefully lift this off. And then I'm going to add foam pads to mine. Foam, these are really sticky and they stick well to the acetate as well. You're not going to see it, I mean, unless someone looks behind it, but I'm not worried about that. But I just think it'd be nice just to lift them off the, you know, the actual acetate slightly. So I'm not going to stick the stem itself because the grass is going to hold that all into place. So I'm just going to have that roughly there. So yeah, I'm going to do that and get them all stuck down. Okay, so there's all my poppies stuck down. I love it. I think it looks it's such a pretty, happy card. Just, I, again, I repeat myself all the time, but I love colouring. I just think it brings a whole different look to card making. So now I'm going to choose a sentiment. It's going to have happy birthday, so I'm going to stamp one of those in a moment. I'm also going to bring in, I think I can find a couple of little butterflies or bees or something just to have here. Maybe thinking about it now, I could have maybe stamped a bee here and here. So that's always another idea as well. But I'm going to have a little look around and, um, yeah, get that all finished. Okay, and there's the finished card. So I've just used the Happy Birthday from the same stamp set and I've just popped one of my little acetate butterflies there which has actually got the orange, the green and the blue so it matches really nicely with this card. On the back, you've got all that space there to decorate. So you just need to cut your mats and layers the same size as that piece. So I'd say four and three quarters by, sorry, three, uh, three and three quarters by five and three quarters. And then that will go on the back. I'll do that and you'll see again all the photos in my blog. But yeah, really, really like this. This is the six by six bridge fold card using those beautiful poppy layered stamps from the magazine. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it's helped. There's been, I hope, a lot of tips in there for you. So if you've enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.